Hey, sports fans, PB and Z, sports chaos. Hey, PB, before we get started, one of our loyal followers, Ricky P, we know him both very well. He gave me this from the Cape Cod. It's called Hog Island Outermost IPA. It's not bad. As you can see, I have a little virtual background going on, so you can't really see it that well, apparently. <laughs> I'm honoring my brother Mike passed away nine years ago on Thursday. God rest his soul, brother. All right. Yeah. Hey, we're allowed to talk about NFL preseason is kicked off. As we saw, there was a couple games last night. There was a game last week, right? We got some games tonight. The Ravens, apparently, who played last night, are keeping track of this historic streak they're on. 21 straight wins in preseason. Who counts the preseason wins? That means nothing. Oh, my God. Unbelievable. Maybe they should focus on winning regular season games. Ooh, to shade. By the way, I did pick them to win the division, though. Hey, by the way, the Pats, who apparently haven't decided who their offensive coordinator is between a special teams coach and a defensive coordinator, decide we don't need to play our quarterback last night because he doesn't need to get any reps with the coaches who have never coached offense before. WTF? I mean, what? Come on. All I'm going to say is Patrick Mahomes is playing tonight for a series. That's all I'm going to say about that. He's playing with a coach he's been with for his whole life, but he's yet playing a series or maybe more tonight. So we'll see. Hey, and we're going to do our little AFC East preview. Speaking of the uh, Pats, right, momentarily, I got to say, though, by the time the AFC East uh, NFL season, I should say, kicks off, the Red Sox will be out of playoff contention entirely. Time Bloom must go, right? Yeah. All right. Hey. PB, one thing before we get going, I have to appreciate the NBA. They apparently listened to you and I. They took our advice. They they said all teams are going to retire Bill Russell's number six. Thanks to the PBC Sports Chaos Show. We convinced the NBA to do that, and now they're going to do it. I can look at the face of the Knicks owner and the L.A. Uh, Lakers owner, because you know what else they have to do? On the court, there's going to be a number six with a leprechaun around it on every court in the NBA. Can you imagine the Lakers owner having to put that on his court? <laughs> that would be awesome. Oh, my God. Hey, before we talk about the AFC East, a former AFC East guy, Tom Brady, he's in the news for taking a 10-day vacation or more. We don't even know what it is. Is this a big deal? Uh, you know, it's personal matters, right? We don't know what's going on. Um, he's had, you know, his, his mom, obviously... Yes. Has, yep. You know, she's remission, I guess you could say, right, from, yep. from breast cancer. She could be battling something health wise. Um, you know, I, I don't think it's a immediate family thing to be with his wife and kids because he had all that time already during the off season. So there's probably something going on that he just needs to take care of and he wants to be with his family at this time. So and no, it doesn't matter because he doesn't need to go to training camp anyways. Is it a little bit ironic, though, that it's the same time that the Miami Dolphins are at Tampa Bay practicing with them before the preseason game that he's trying to avoid that whole hoopla? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, PB. What do you? Uh, maybe. I, who knows? Right? Interesting, interesting timing, to say yeah. the least. All right. Let's hit the AFC East. Our Pats, your Dolphins, sometimes Pats, if, depending on who's winning. They play in the AFC East. Let's talk about the Buffalo Bills. What do you think of the Buffalo Bills this season's schedule? Uh, I, I think the Buffalo Bills are going to have a fantastic year. I think they're the best team in the AFC, um, clearing away. I mean, it used to be a Buffalo-Kansas City conversation, but now Kansas City's out of that conversation. Um, you know, I, I know the charges are up and coming. There's some other teams that, you know, potentially could contend there. I don't think anybody in the South is. The North, I mean, I, I wouldn't even put Baltimore close to that same caliber. I think this team is clear in a way, the best team in the AFC. I have them having a really good year this year. I mean, they go through one stretch, um, tough stretch when they have to play the Rams in Kansas City. And no, I don't think it's a stretch. It's just that they get the three road games at LA Rams, at Kansas City, and at Cincinnati. Those three road games are going to be their toughest games of the year. They'll probably win one of them at least, right? Now that so maybe they lose one or two, where are the other losses coming? I mean, maybe, maybe somehow Miami or New England figures out a way to split with them. But I got them at 14 and three. And I think oh, okay. All right. All right. Okay. I think that's realistic to be 14. I thought you were gonna go 16 and one or 15 and two. And I'm like, well, hold on. 
No, because they'll lose one or two of those game, those three road games I just mentioned at Rams, at Kansas City, at Cincy, and then uh, they'll lose a random game. Like last year, they lost to Jacksonville. Do you remember that? Yeah, they lost to Jacksonville last year. Oh Almost, yeah, yeah. So this they'll lose one of those games that everyone expects them to win. Um, they may split with either. I don't think they'll split with both Miami and New England, but maybe they'll split with one of those two teams. That's another loss. I just don't have this team losing a lot of games, 14 and three. I'm with you, but I got to say this. I think the basement for them is 11, seven, because the Rams, Baltimore and KC, I have as definite losses. They're all on the road. And the Rams are the first game, which by the way, now I'm a little bit questionable because of the Matthew Stafford elbow injury, right? To your point, I think they split with the Dolphins potentially. Tennessee is going to be a tough game no matter what, because Tennessee can grind those guys. And I don't think Buffalo's great. As, as was shown last year in their one loss to the Pats, they can be run on. Green Bay is Green Bay. Cleveland is Cleveland. And, of course, they get Cincinnati as well, like you mentioned. So, I don't know. At KC is a loss, in my opinion. I do not believe that KC wants to get in the, uh, Buffalo's head and think that they can beat them. So, I think KC finds a way to win that game, by the way. So, I don't know. I, I got them at 14-3 as well. My ceiling is definitely 15 and two. It's definitely 15 and two. Okay. All right. Well, we both have it 14 and three. We'll see. And on the over, by the way, it's 11 and a half. I believe they have the number one team in Vegas in terms of win totals. So 11 and a half is where they're sitting. I bet. The by the, by the way, three, three moves they made. One was getting Von Miller, huge. And two guys who are not going to start, but they're going to play instr instrumental roles. James and Crowder is like a third, fourth wide receiver. And O.J. Howard at tight end. Yeah. Good so point. we'll see. Yeah. All right, let's do the Dolphins. You're, I, I see you're wearing the logo. I got the Dolphins hat on here momentarily because I have one because they gave it to me as being a member, season ticket member. So why not? Um, so Dolphins, they're going to start off and end in rough, rough patches. I mean, they open up. With New England at home, at Baltimore, Buffalo at home, at Cincinnati. Yep. Those first four games are tough, man. I mean, if they can win one of those, right, maybe two if they're lucky at most, right? Yep. Then they have to finish up their season. They have a, a stretch of three games on the road, at Frisco, at Chargers, at Buffalo. Yep. Man, that's tough, right? And they'll stay out in California because they're playing the Niners and the Chargers back to back. Back to back, weeks. right. Then after that stretch, they got to play Green Bay. Then they're at New England in the freezing cold. And On New Year's off. Day. Yeah, and then they finish off with the Jets, which is an easy. But that that five game stretch again, if they they're lucky, if they win one or two of those games. So in those stretches, first four and last five or five of the last six. I could see them only winning like maybe two or three of those games, but they should win the rest of their games. They have a kind of a popcorn schedule in between Minnesota at Miami might be a, a top one. I think that's the only other game in there that I could see them potentially losing. They should win all their home games besides that. So I have them, I am at 10 and seven. They could go nine and eight. They could be okay. a game either way here and there, but I think they have enough weapons this year that they're going to go 10 and seven. They, their running game should be improved. Offensive line is still a big question mark, but 10 and 7. By the way, you speak about the weapons. I mean, Tyreek Hill, Cedric Wilson at wide receiver, and then the running game, they, the whole running backfield is all new. Raheem Mozart from the 49ers, good player. Right. Chase Edmonds, a draft pick, right? And Sonny Michel. I mean, Sonny Michel is a decent back, as we saw with him with the Patriots, right? Right. Well, well Chase Edmonds, no, they got from the Cardinals. That's right. I'm sorry. Chase, yeah, that's right. Yeah, they got from Cows, but and, and don't forget about Waddle. Yes, at wide receiver. So they've got the skill positions in Mike Lecky, obviously, who's uh, their tight end. The skill positions, it's all up to two at this point in time. Here's what I say. Uh, my thought is this for them, it's oh, don't forget on defense. Melvin Ingram could have a sneaky good year for those guys. Yeah, he looked good right? in camp. I saw him in camp the other last week. He looked really good. For me, they could be as bad as nine and eight, but I'm with you. I think 10 and seven is accurate, but believe it or not, PB, I think they could be as good as 13 and four. If, if two are gels and the offensive line gels. Okay. Which is a big if, but, but you have them at 10 and seven. Is that your call, final call? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that whole stretch you talked about San Francisco, Buffalo, Green Bay, New England, man. I, I, 
I think that best they go one and no, actually I don't even think they win any of those games. Quite honestly, maybe the New England game, but it's in New England on New Year's Day, so I, they probably lose all five. That means it's the rest of the season they're going to make up the the Delta. Yeah, I think they can beat Green Bay at Miami, but that'll be the that'll, that'll be the game. That that if they beat Green Bay in Miami, it doesn't matter. If they just beat Green Bay, then they're for real. That'll be the game, and that's Christmas Day. There you go. See, you go. Yeah. there's a Christmas present for you. All right, let's talk about the Pats. Oh, right. switch and hat. He's a switch hitter, fans. A little switch there. <laughs> All right, Pats. Um, I can see them starting the year strong. They're going to, up until Thanksgiving game, this team should go seven and three, maybe six and four, but I think they can make it to seven and three. But then the problem is that stretch from Thanksgiving on at Minnesota on Thanksgiving Day. Buffalo at home, at Arizona on Monday Night Football, short week, staying out west at Vegas the following week, then Cincinnati at home, then Miami at home, and then at Buffalo to finish off the season. That's a tough stretch down the, down the end there. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven games, they may only win one or two of those. And, and now their they're hot start of seven and three all of a sudden turns into an eight and nine or nine and eight record. I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Maybe they can win two of those. So I'll, I'll say nine and eight for the Pats, which will probably keep them out of the playoffs in the AFC. I'm going to tell you right now, I have a lot of concerns. Shaq Mason being traded, why they did that just blows my mind. They got no replay. Cole Strange is not the replay. I mean, maybe he's going to have a decent year. Who knows? We had him being fourth or fifth round draft pick. He went number one. James White retired the other day. That's That's critical. And then you get lost J.C. Jackson, the cornerback, the best cornerback. And you got rid of the entire starting linebackers. Van Noy, Hightower, Jamie Collins, all gone. Here's my thoughts. This team is looking at potentially 5-12. and 12. Maybe, if God forbid there's miracles that happen, they go 11-6. and six. But I'm with you. I see them 8-9. and nine. And PB, that 8-9 is based on one thing only. They sweep the Jets. If they don't sweep the Jets, they're 7-10. and 10. <laughs> Okay. All right, so we got about this is one of those teams we're going to do our five in, five out, obviously, at the end of all these predictions. And I think this is one of the teams we're going to have out of the playoffs that made it last year. I, I and, and by the way, let's not, let's not forget about this. They have no real offensive coordinator, and the guy that may be the offensive coordinator was a defensive coach or a special teams coach before this. I mean, I don't know. Yep, I'm right there with you. All right, man, let's move on to the Jets. By the way, the Jets, who possibly had the best draft in the last five years of any team. Yeah, they still But suck. they also lost their number one pick from last year. Makai Becton is already out, right? The offensive tackle. Yeah. That's a tough blow. So what do you think? It is a tough blow. And that's what we, they really need. We know that teams, they're building around some of the skilled players that they've been getting lately, right? Um, and, and Zach Wilson's going to need that protection and he's going to need a good offensive line and then you get the running game and they got they drafted on um, Brees Hall um who's highly touted I mean there's some guys there that they're relying on the offensive line if they can't fill that void it's going to be a disaster but they still suck um they suck really bad they I, I mean I, this is this the game for them of the year is going to be the game against Chicago because the winner of that game will not get the number one overall pick next year <laughs> Whoa, so you really think it's going to be that bad, huh? I think the Jets and the Bears will be the two worst teams in the NFL. And that game, whoever wins that game gets the number two pick, and whoever loses that game will get the number one pick. Um, I got the Jets finishing 3-14. and 14. I'm a lot more optimistic, man. I, I see them at worst case 5-12. and 12. I think they finish 6-11. and 11. And you are true. They have a tough schedule. I mean, look at this schedule to start the season. They've got Baltimore at Cleveland, Cincy at Pittsburgh, Miami at Green Bay at Denver. Come back to New England and come back for Buffalo. That's potentially that's before the buy. They could be zero and nine. In the <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. I mean, what do you? Maybe they win one of those games. That's why. And then they have a couple of games that they can. Yeah, that Chicago game. I'm telling you, that Chicago game is going to determine who's the worst team in the league. I would just say this before we go into fantasy. I think because they've drafted pretty well the last couple of years, and if Zach Wilson could turn out to be anything 
above average. They've got some really good skill players, and that I mean, they could do some stuff on offense. Defense is okay, not crazy, but we'll see. Well, I don't know. I'm a little leery of them. I think it, they're going to they're going to be ahead of the Pats in another two years if the Pats don't start doing something right on, on their draft picks. It's possible. All right, let's talk fantasy in five. I'm going to ask you right now. You tell me what if you're drafted. If you're doing a sleeper pick only. What does your sleeper lineup look like? All right. So the way I'm going to define sleeper is someone who is outside of the top um, number that you would normally be drafting, right? So yeah, we'll start like with Zach quarterback. Wilson, the quarterback. All right. So we'll start. We'll start with quarterback. So your QB one through twelve, right, in a twelve team league, would be your starting quarterback. So I'm looking outside of that top twelve. So this is a guy. All right. Start off the season on your bench, right? Okay. Um, you know, and Trey Lance, a lot of people are high on Trey Lance, but you know what? Trey Lance is moving into the top 12 in most draft positions right now. So you he's technically not even a sleeper right now. Who I am going to go with is my sleeper, though. Right now, he's averaging his uh, QB 15. Um, his ADP is 113, which means you can get him in the 10th round, is Derek Carr. I think with the, ah, really you can get him in a that's a that's a great sleeper then that yeah if you can get him in the tenth round I'm mean, even maybe sneak up to the ninth round depending on who your first quarterback is right or maybe you've loaded up on other positions and haven't drafted a quarterback yet then you definitely want to go ninth round because you don't want to lose them but if you already have a quarterback you could definitely wait till the tenth round by the um, way he may be my survivor pick. All right, well, get, I mean, think about what's going on there. I mean, he's got he's got an offensive coordinator with a with a uh, I mean, a, a head coach with an offensive coordinator type mindset. He's got the weapons. He's got Devontae Adams. He's got Darren Waller. He's got Renfro in the slot. You know, he's got a r- running game potentially with with Jacobs and this kid Zemir White's looking pretty good. So yep. we'll see what happens. I mean, I, I think he's a good good pick at quarterback. All right, we move, we move to running back. Now I want to pick outside the top thirty six because again. You have 12 teams in a fantasy league. Sure. Everybody would have three running backs, and that would be 36, right? So I got to look outside of the top 36 for this. And I have actually a guy who's right now at running back 38. Um, his ADP is right around 100. So this is a guy you can get in the early ninth round. And it's James Cook. James Cook in Buffalo. I think oh, that's I, you know, I forgot to mention him earlier. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's not I bad. Think, wow, I think, all right. I think he clearly is a um, a, a, a back that's going to be catching the ball a lot. He's going to be involved in the passing game. He's actually working out with the wide receiver team in camp right now just to get that extra practice with running routes and catching balls. Um, he's out of he's, Georgia, right? He's out of, is he out of Georgia? Ah, uh, geez, I'm not sure where he's out okay, of. Okay, I think he is. I think he is. But at any rate, he um, – and, and, and you look at the Buffalo running game. It's 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 never really been that good. You True. have you know Singletary True. and Moss try to share the backfield. Singletary obviously emerged out of that this year. It'll be Singletary and Cook, I think. And, and Cook could emerge, but at the very least, he's going to be a, a third down uh, passing okay. back. So okay, I like him there. Um, as far as wide receivers go, again, looking outside the top thirty-six this is a guy who you'd be drafting as not one of your potential starters, at least when yep. the season starts, is Brandon Ayuk in San Francisco. Um, he's right now the wide receiver 37, 38, somewhere around there. His ADP is 92. So here's a guy you can get in a 12-team league in the late eighth round. And he's looking really, really good in camp. And then you have a team with, you know, you got George Kittle, you got um, – the other receiver, Debo Samuel. So that's going to draw some coverage there. So Ayuk could find himself getting over. He's a, he was a highly rated kid coming out of college, and uh, he's had some injuries, so obviously, since he came into the league. But I'm with you. He's he's a potential star. Yeah, he is. So that's why I like him as a sleeper down there at that, at that point. And then for tight end, I went with the tight end 17. Again, looking outside the top 12, because you only stopped one tight end in fantasy. Yep. So I looked outside the top 12 and I have um, Gerald Everett with the Chargers. Um, right now he's going off as 148. This is ADP. So here's a guy you could probably get in the 12th or 13th round. He'd probably be your second tight end on your team. And But look at the Chargers offense. Again, lots of weapons, lots of players. Lot, he's the tight end one on the team. So he has an opportunity 
to see some looks and get some targets. Uh, now, is this, this, like, is this his first year for the Chargers? Because he was on the Rams before, right? Yeah, yep. He was on the Rams before, and I think he went to Seattle for a little bit. I, I think you're right on the money. I think he's going to blossom big time. He was he was good on the Rams. They didn't use him a lot enough, but I thought he yeah. was one of their better receivers. Yeah. So those are, those are sleepers. So you got Derek Carr, quarterback. All Jay right. Cook at running back, Brandon Ayuk at wide receiver, and Gerald Everett at tight end. You know, if that's your lineup, I think you make money this year. And those are all sleepers. Those are all guys you can get. Eight, Ooh, nine, I ten like times. it. I like it. All right, man. Nice. All right. There you go, fans. A little fantasy in five from PB. Nice job. All right. Next week, we'll do a little. I don't, what are we going to do? Stop talking college, I guess, maybe? No, we'll we, have, we still, no we still got to do the NFC uh, South. Oh, we forgot Tampa Tom. That's right. <laughs> NFC more, South coming up. Oh, division. yeah, one more division, and then we'll do our then we'll do our predictions for NFL okay. and then our college predictions. So we'll get that all, all right, in the season spots. Yeah, nice. All right, fans, have a good weekend, PB. All right, you too, man.